Hey, this is Larry Curry with Miller Industries. Today we're in beautiful Atlanta, Georgia at the Georgia World Congress Center. We're gonna go over some preventative maintenance on your light duty auto load wheel lift. These preventative maintenance steps are gonna to apply to your Century, Vulcan, and Homes Generation 1 and 2 auto load wheel lifts. Today we have a Vulcan 810 Generation 1 wheel lift and a Vulcan 812 Generation 2 wheel lift. So we're gonna get started on the Vulcan 810 Generation 1 wheel lift, but first there's a few items that you're gonna need. Here we have laid out a half inch ratchet with a 15 16 socket, a 3 8 ratchet with a 3 8 and a 7 seconds Allen head socket. We've got a flat head screwdriver to loosen any debris in and around the fasteners. We've got a grease gun, some gloves, and of course, eye protection. For our grease gun, we as a manufacturer recommend a lithium-based EP extreme pressure grease. We also recommend using a thread locker on any fastener without a nut to keep it from backing out. First thing we're gonna do is a visual inspection of the complete wheel lift assembly, checking for any bent or crack components and or any missing fittings, pins, or fasteners. Reach out to your local Miller Industries distributor for all required replacement parts. Next, we're gonna to go to the L-arm pivot pin fasteners. These are gonna take a 7 seconds Allen head, socket, and or wrench. It's important to check the tightness of these fasteners as that pin holds the L-arm to the crossbar. Next, we're gonna to go to the pivot pin area where we're gonna check and tighten the four 7 seconds countersunk Allen head screws. I'm gonna take my flat head screwdriver and I'm just gonna clean away any debris that I might have inside the Allen head sockets. Always keep a paper towel to wipe that away. I'm gonna jump in here with my 7 seconds Allen head socket. And I'm gonna make sure that the fasteners are tight and secure. I'm gonna hit the fasteners in a cross pattern. Next, we're gonna check and tighten our two crossbar tensioning bolts. But first, we need to extend the wheel lift out just enough to clear our alignment forks. Now that I have the wheel lift extended, I'm gonna come into the bottom side with my 15 16 socket, 3 8 Allen head on top, and check the tightness. And repeat on this side. You always wanna make sure to check your upper and lower Nylatron thrust washers for thickness, replace if needed. If you've ever had your wheel lift skip, chatter, or screech, that's a good indication that it needs to be lubricated. Next, we're gonna move on to lubrication, but please make sure to refer back to your owner's manual. We're gonna lubricate both our driver's side and passenger side L-arm pivot pins. Moving on to the crossbar pivot pin area, it's always a good idea to take your flathead screwdriver and just clear away any excess oil, grease, or debris away from the fitting. Apply that grease until you see it exit the thrust washer area. Next, we're moving on to the wheel lift pivot pin area where you have one single grease fitting located in the middle. We're gonna apply grease until we have visual appearance of grease on the outside of the pivot pin. Next, we're gonna move on to the grease fittings located at the upper rear portion of the outer wheel lift. These grease fittings apply grease to the upper wear pad of the inner wheel lift. To properly apply grease to the upper wear pad, you wanna make sure the wheel lift is fully retracted. And to gain better access to the grease fittings, you wanna make sure the wheel lift is slightly folded. A commonly missed grease fitting is the lower fold cylinder pin. Continuing up the wheel lift, we're gonna grease the upper fold cylinder pin, the upper elevation cylinder pin, 
And there is a grease fitting located at the base end of the boom elevation cylinder. And the cable guide pin. And there may be a grease fitting on the cable guide weld. Next, we move on to the main boom pin. You're gonna have a grease fitting located on each end. Next, we're gonna grease the bottom of the wheel lift. A good way to apply the grease is a putty knife, paint roller, or a simple piece of cardboard. The outer wheel lift does have two lower wear pads. We're gonna apply grease up each side on each visible track. And lastly, we wanna inspect all hydraulic hoses for any wear or damage. Next, we're gonna move on to the Vulcan 812 Generation 2 wheel lift. But before we do, we're gonna need some tools. I have here laid out a half inch ratchet with a 15 16 socket, a 3 8 ratchet with a 3 8 and a 5 16 Allen head socket, a flathead screwdriver to clean up any of that debris that we might have around our fasteners, a grease gun with a lithium based EP extreme pressure grease, gloves, and of course, safety glasses. We also recommend using a thread locker on any fastener without a nut to keep it from backing out. First thing we're gonna do is go to the pivot pin on the lower side and check to make sure that the two 5 16 bolts are tight. Next, we're gonna unfold the wheel lift and do a visual inspection, checking for any bent or cracked components and or damaged or missing bolts, fittings, or fasteners. Reach out to your local Miller Industries distributor for all required replacement parts. Next, we're gonna move on to the two crossbar tensioning bolts. We're gonna utilize our half inch ratchet with our 15 16 socket and our 3 8 ratchet with our 3 8 hex head socket. We're gonna utilize the 3 8 socket on top, 15 16 socket on the bottom to hold, keeping in mind that you may need a flathead screwdriver to clean out any debris around that nut. And to add, you wanna make sure that the wheel lift is slightly extended out so that you're able to test the tension on the crossbar. Next, we're gonna take a look and inspect the upper and lower Nylatron thrust washer. As you can see here, the upper thrust washer is being pushed out and the lower thrust washer is almost non-existent. As the thrust washers wear down, you will periodically need to tighten the crossbar tensioning bolts. Maintaining those thrust washers and tightening those tensioning bolts will help keep the crossbar straight and keep it from drifting when you approach the casualty. If you find yourself getting out of the vehicle to realign that crossbar on approach, it's probably time to inspect and tighten the wheel lift. Next, we're gonna move on to lubrication, but please make sure to refer back to your owner's manual. The crossbar assembly has six grease fittings. You're gonna have a grease fitting on each end of the cylinder and one at the L-arm pivot pin, both driver's side and passenger side. Next, we move on to the crossbar pivot pin. We're gonna utilize our flathead screwdriver and just clean all this debris out before we apply our lubrication. Quick wipe with a paper towel onto the grease. Next, we're gonna to move to the detent ball assembly. The detent ball assembly centers the crossbar on the end of the wheel lift. The grease fitting is located in the backside area. We're gonna grease that fitting, and then we're gonna apply a small amount of grease to the surface area. Next, we move to the wheel lift pivot pin. You have one grease fitting mounted center. Next, we're gonna locate the grease fittings at the upper rear portion of the outer wheel lift. These fittings apply grease to the upper wear pad of the inner wheel lift. To apply grease to the wear pad, we need to make sure the wheel lift is fully retracted. And to gain better access to each fitting, we need to make sure the wheel lift is slightly folded. 
Next, we move to the lower fold cylinder pin. This grease fitting is commonly missed. As we move to the top of the boom area, we're gonna grease the upper fold cylinder pin, the upper elevation cylinder pin, the cable guide, and the cable guide weldment. And there is a grease fitting located at the base end of the boom elevation cylinder. Next, we're gonna move on to the main boom pivot pin. You'll have a grease fitting located on each end, driver side, passenger side. Next, we're moving on to the bottom of the inner wheel lift. We have two wear pads on the bottom portion of the outer wheel lift. So we're gonna apply grease to the bottom. Always remember to apply that grease with a putty knife, paint roller, or even a piece of cardboard. And lastly, we want to inspect all hydraulic hoses for any wear or damage. We hope you found this video helpful. Please feel free to share the video with anybody you feel that it might benefit. And thanks for watching. Make sure you subscribe to our news feed to stay up to date on all the latest news and information from Miller Industries. Miller Industries, the world leader in towing and recovery equipment. This video is for product demonstration purposes only and is not intended for training or instructional purposes. Situations vary and operators should rely on their own professional knowledge and safety procedures when conducting actual recoveries.